What up, y'all? We back. In our uh, last episode, I left off with the Kimber Walker trade, and we still here. Trade that line. So let's get right into it. Y'all can see on the screen, we got Kimber Walker and James Ennis to the Magic for Jonathan Isaac, Terrence Ross, and Orlando's first round pick. This isn't the trade that I'm doing, or I'm about to do anything like that. I've been just looking at some trades that can happen. And realistically, um, there's only two teams that I can really make a, a, a real good deal with for the sake of getting Kim Walker off of my team and, and not losing him to, for nothing in the offseason. And right now, the Magic would, would use him and need him, especially because they're making a playoff push. Um, right now, I think they're sitting currently sixth in the playoffs. Um, their record is 26 and 28, but that that's good enough to be the sixth seed in the East. Um, and as you can see, they have a good front court. Aaron Gordon, their best player, you know, only 23 years old. Then you have Vucevic, um, who was giving them 13 and nine, pretty solid. And then they got Fournier, you know, 18 points a game, a solid wing. Then off the bench, you got Jonathan Simmons, who's giving you 12, three, and basically three, 12, three, and three. And then you have a young rookie, Mike Hurd, who's giving you 12, three and almost two so they have the wings all in place you know what i mean they have you know a nice young core and then they even have tyrone wallace <clears throat> he's right now the current starting point guard he's giving them seven points basically four rebounds and five assists solid but if you take those numbers and those become you know uh your backup point guard numbers and you throw in kimber walker I think you'd be solid. Kim Walker is gonna come in and, and be the best overall player. Um, I think Kim Walker becomes your, your your main guy, and I think it'll be a better situation for Kim because their be their two best players after him are uh, front court players, the big man. Not anybody that's gonna take the ball out of his hands like here in Phoenix when he has to give up the ball to Devin Booker. He has to give up the ball to my dude. Um, so that's two other people that's kind of getting in Kimber way. Fournier is just the guy you create shots for. You know what I mean? He's a sharpshooter. That's exactly what his his, his uh, thing calls and his tag above, right across from the badges on the right side. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you would call it, a player tag or what their, what, what describes them, um, their mode, whatever the term you want to use. His is a sharpshooter. So he's, you know what I mean? He's not really creating any shots for anybody. He's not making plays, so the ball's not really in his hands. You can just run stuff with this guy. And then um, Mike is a premier perimeter threat. You know what I mean? The same thing. Mike has an incredible three-point shot. Um, his assists are only at one, so he's not out here making plays for anybody. Um, and then, you know, off the bench, they would have a solid backcourt with Jonathan Simmons, who's giving you experience, um, especially when the playoffs come. You got uh, Bismack Biombo. Bismack Biombo also has some experience in the playoffs, and looks like he's, he's um, been better this year. <clears throat> and then you have Tyron Wallace, who has been pretty solid. Um, and then the rest, you know, it's just some here, here or there type pieces. I don't really know how much stock they have in these guys tied up. But, you know, Augustine, another guy with experience. Uh, Rodney Magruder from the Heat. You know, I guess he can knock down some shots or, or give you some defense on the wing. Um, okay, his three-point shooting is only a C, but let's see what the actual... Yeah, 78, that's not bad at all. But says up there per perimeter defense so he can give you some defense off the bench um and then we're gonna give him james james ennis who's another wing that's long has some experience from the grizzlies um he hasn't you know got the role that he would like on our team uh so i think the magic will be good for him because he's used to being in the playoffs um with the grizzlies he's used to playing for something and now we will be giving him that opportunity and they could actually use him in a certain way he wants to be used because here he kind of fighting for minutes, you know? And then we would be getting Terrence Ross and he would just be like a salary dump. We would probably let him go at the end of the year and get his $10 million off the books. Um, and then they have that first round pick, which will give us another pick. Um, and then the other trade that I had was just the one other team. You know, the Clippers, I was looking at the Clippers and thinking I can give them Kimba and try to get Tobias Harris back. But if y'all see, um, they just re-signed him. You know, he says right there, hey Clippers fans, better get used to my mug. I just resigned. Bright future. And that was February 12th. The trade deadline is the 14th. So that was just two days ago. For some reason, his contract on your far right of the screen has not updated. And it's probably because it won't update to the end of this season. 
But yes, Tobias Harris is locked up for the next four or five years, I believe. Um, so it's very unrealistic that a guy would sign a, a, a contract extension two days before the deadline and then be traded at the deadline. So I'm gonna let them keep him. Um, and then everybody else has a legitimate point guard or they're already thriving. You know what I mean? The LeBron James and the Cavs, they're the best team in the league. You know, so there's no reason for them to change anything about their roster. Because I would have loved to guy in Kevin Love. Um, he's only 30 years old. He has the two years on his deal. At the end of the deal, we could probably try to shed him off, whatever. But why would they make a move right now when they're the best team in the league? You know, that would just fuck up all the chemistry, so we're not going to do that. The Bulls, they have a young point guard, you know what I mean? But I, I think the Bulls would, would prefer to just let him grow than, than to bring in a 29-year-old point guard um, who, they're about to, who they would have to pay because they're about to have to pay Zach Levine. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't think that would be realistic then. These guys, they have point guards and their actual point guard is hurt and coming back. Um, so that makes no sense for them. So everybody pretty much got a point guard, except the Nuggets. And even the guy who is their secondary point guard or, or acts as their point guard um, is out for the season. So they're trying to make a playoff push and I was thinking of getting Laios because I, I prefer him over Millsap. Millsap has one year on his contract left. He's 33 years old. He's trying to make 20, he's making 29 million dollars uh, with them this last season. So I don't know how much he would ask for an open market. Um, <clears throat> so I would rather have Trey Lyles, because Trey Lyles is only, what, 23? Um, yeah, Trey Lyles is 23. He's moving up in his potential. His rating is getting better. When you look at him and his game, he has an a 80 mid-range open, 84 three-point open, uh, 78 three-point contested, you know what I mean? So he's, he's doing good. He got standing layup at 94, uh, driving layup is 81. So he's his ratings and his attributes are fitting and molding into the perfect stretch four that I would want on my team. So I'm leaning towards him. And if you look at Millsap, you know, when his ratings, he's getting older and whatnot. And then, you know, open shot mid is only a 61 compared to Trey Lyles' 80. That does nothing for me. That is terrible. Uh, open shot three is a 78 compared to Trey Lyles' shot being a three being an 81. That's terrible. So his free throw is only a 70. You know, his driving layup is a 91, his standing layup is 91, and driving layup is 74, but that's kind of the same as Trey Lyles. So then their numbers and attributes and even the rating is kind of very similar for them to have so much distance in, in age. He's 33 and he's 23. So it's a 10 year gap and he's on his, he's a, and he's a 79, but he's moving up. So he's an 80 and then Paul Millsap was 82. So the overall is only on two, but the the um, age is a 10 year gap. So I'm gonna lean with, I'm gonna lean with, <laughs> I'm gonna lean with Trey Lyles. Um, and the, the Nuggets realistically have to give up one of, one of these guys just because they already have Trey Lyles. Millsap, and they even get it for Reed minutes. They found a way to play for Reed, and he's been actually contributing um, somewhat. 11 points and eight rebounds. Very, very solid for them. So they, they have like a, a power forward by committee type situation going on. Um, and they're winning. They're, they're fighting for the playoffs. They end the playoffs. They have a pretty good team, you know. Colin Sexton and Malik Beasley, Wilson Chandler all coming off the bench, even Plumley. Um, so you add Kimba Walker to the mix, and you have a dangerous team. Um, I would probably probably ask for Wilson Chandler um, from them. They would be so they, they would be adding, and I would probably ask for um, a draft pick, their first round pick, unprotected. Um, and then they would be looking at a team that would have Kimba Walker as the one. He would come in and be the second best player rating wise. Gary Harris. I don't know who they would play at the three. Maybe Kyle Anderson, Millsap, and then Jokic. And then off the bench, you got Fareed and Plumley, or Fareed or Plumley, Colin Sexton, Malik Beasley. Um, you got Herman Gomez. <clears throat> and then you would have James Ennis, who is a small four that will be replacing Wilson Chandler. And then. Um, when Jamal Murray comes back, you got six guys who are going to be eligible to start for you. And you're going to be just having a better bench. I guess Jamal Murray will be your sixth man because you'll have Kimba, Gary Harris, Kyle Anderson, 
Millsap, if you were signing him and Jokic, then you would have Jamal Murray, Sexton. That, that's a very good backcourt with those two guys because Sexton is only a, a um, rookie. So they'd be solid. They'd be, they'd be very, very solid. Um, and like I said, they're a playoff team. So Kimball Walker would help them in that way. The Suns, we're not a playoff team. You know what I mean? We're a team that's rebuilding, and uh, he hasn't helped us at all. You know, if anything, he's hurt us. We're, we're worse than we were at this point last year. So we we gonna we don't we don't need that that type of baggage on our team of having a 29 year old guy going into his 30s signed to a long term contract. We don't need that type of you know um, hold on our salary cap because that's exactly what it would be. If we were a playoff team and we were thriving, I, have a, I would have no problems re-signing him and we would just continue to make the playoffs for the next few years and try to add piece to piece to make us, you know, real contenders. But right now, we're still in a rebuilding stage, you know, which is something I thought we would be out of. I thought if we missed the playoffs, it would be by a couple games. But it looked like we headed to the lottery and fighting for the first overall pick. Um, so these are the two trades that I'm having lined up, you know what I mean? Um, You know, Jonathan Isaac is, is, is good. Um, he's young. This is only his second year. His um, overall is went up to the 80s. And defensively, he's just very, very good defensively. You see uh, one steal, one block. But if you just look at his numbers and his attributes, he, he open shot three is a 76. That's solid, which means he can be the six, the stretch four. He's 6'10", 2'10", very long. Um, Free throws is good, standing layup is good, um, driving layup can be better, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll progress because like I said, he's, he's only in his second year, he's 21 years old. Um, but then, this is what I take from him. Defensive rebound, 71, should continue to get better. On the ball defense, as a second year player, 21 years old, it's already 87. Already 87. Low post defense is 70, it's gonna, it's gonna get better though. Pick and roll defensive IQ. 84. Help defense, 83. Defensive consistency, 75. Pass perception, 77. All of these are very good for any player. Those are solid numbers, but when you take into account that he's 21, that makes it even better. So as a 21 year, his on ball defensive IQ is already 87. Hell, by the time he's 23, that shit's gonna be like a 94. And he's gonna be one of the best defenders in the game. The pick and roll defense IQ. That's gonna be in it damn near at the 90s when he becomes 23, 24. All of these things are only gonna to continue to trade upward. They're only going upward. He's only progressing. He's only progressing. Steel is an 89 as a 21 year old. Block is an 84. Those are, you just can't find it around different places. And then he has the ability to knock down a three. We wouldn't, we wouldn't ask him on his team to be you know, a go-to guy or a legitimate score. He, we would just ask him to knock down shots when we make the defense collapse. Um, because Devin Booker is our go-to guy. We got my dude we just drafted who's gonna be a Lamar Odom-esque guy who's gonna create and play make for other people. Um, the guy that we want to get out of draft is my little brother who was a combo guard and we would just put him at this, this point guard situation and then we would allow my dude to, to be like our primary ball handler and allow Devin Booker and my little brother to just go off and, and be the scorers that they are. Alex Lynn is gonna protect the paint and the, Jonathan Isaac would be the guy that we would just need to stretch the floor. And then defensively, he's gonna be able to block shots, get steals, guard guys on the perimeter. Hopefully, you know, we are gonna try to put emphasis on his low post defense getting better, but we have Alex Lynn for that. Um, but he's gonna be a versatile defender that can play on the perimeter. He can help pick and roll. He can help in general. The defensive consistency is going up, so he's gonna be consistent. We can always expect and rely on him to have the defense. Um, his pass perception is gonna be in the 80, so he's gonna always know where the ball is going. And then he has the ability to steal the ball, which <laughs> makes his perception that much more important because he's knowing where the ball is going, but he also has the ability to steal it, and then he can block shots. Um, you know, the shot contest, hustle is a 90, so this is a good young player to have as a glue guy and, and, and like be that versatile defender. So I'm leaning towards him because of those reasons. And then when you look at, it, he is 21, he's 23, and they're in the same rating. So, you know, um, I'm gonna lean toward this magic one. And the magic pick might be a little bit more better than um, the Nuggets. And then, uh, 
I think also Kemba fits it better. Um, you know, it's an actual need. I feel like the Magic need him more, I'll say. Because the Nuggets, if they don't ever get Kemba, they'll still have, you know, um, a lineup of Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, whoever they want to play at their three, Kyle Anderson, Wilson Chandler, whatever. Then Millsap, and then Jokic. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll be fine. But here, Tyrone Wallace is solid. It's going to be a, a make would make an even better backup for them. Um, but if you add Kemba Walker to the team, he's automatically their best player. And he's going to get back to that role. It would be like the Hornets all over again, except with an actual team built around him to succeed and, and, and have his strengths. You know what I mean? It'll complement his strengths. So it would be back to him being like that number one guy, having the ball all, all in his hands, except he'll have real help this time. Um, and, and they are very young. So he'd come in and be, you know, a, a leader. Um, and hopefully give them a playoff push because like I said, they're in a sixth seed. You know, of course they're gonna try to wanna uh, fight up and, 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 and get a better seed. And then again, my boy Mike is on the team. So um, this will help Mike in his rookie year of making the playoffs and, and actually succeeding. So we're gonna try to do this and hope that they are willing to accept. Here we go. They like what they have as far as this trade is concerned. So we have to do some convincing. So I'm gonna try to put some picks in here. I'm gonna give them a 20, 2022 second rounder, unprotected. And then I'll also give them um, a 2021st second round pick, unprotected. We like what we have as far as this trade is concerned. However, I have a counter offer that I think can work for both sides. Hopefully they don't try to X for anything crazy. Brandon Knight. DJ Augustine. Um, I have, I have, uh, I have no problem giving up Brandon Knight. I have Brandon Knight because he has a two-year contract of thirty million. I would love to get his fourteen million off of our books if he was a restrict, if he was a free agent coming up. I would keep him and just let him walk. Um, so I have no problem with that. Except we're getting DJ Augustine in return, which. Um, there's there's really no need for him on our roster, and then he also has a two-year deal, so that's the problem. If I'm going to give y'all Brandon Knight, and I want y'all to give me a guy who was on the last year of his deal, who who we can let walk at the end of the year, um, and they don't have that dude. Everybody who has big money for them has a couple years or somebody significant to their team, like a Vucevic. So. What I am going to do is I'll take Augustine if y'all give me another pick. You know what? No, I won't make it unprotected. Y'all gotta give me a 2020 pick. Top five protected. So just to be clear, we will be getting Jonathan Isaac, Terrence Ross, salary dump, and two first round picks. Two future first round picks. And then DJ Augustine um, would be a salary double. I would look to trade him during the um, NBA draft or something like that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try this, I think. And if it doesn't work, I'll try to factor in a third team to try to get DJ Augustine, you know, somewhere and we try to find us a, a team that we can get a one year guy, a one year deal type guy that we can just let walk. But let's see. We're not interested in this trade anymore, guys. They have another count offer. They will want our 20, 2022 unprotected. Um, oh man, they want it unprotected. That's the thing. I'll remove that and I'll put I'll put that pick in there for 20, 2022, which is crazy. Um. This is tough. This is tough because okay, we. I don't expect us to be in 2022. I don't expect us to have a top five pick or anything crazy. So I'll let them have it. Um, 
we giving up we giving up a first round pick to inherit two. You know, and one of them is this year. So, you know, if all fails, if like I said, if all fails, if, you know, that 2020 pick right here, if it's not something that we need or we value, we could easily flip that for a future first round pick to replace this first round pick. Um, and they are giving a big, big piece of their future to resign him just to get a guy like Kemba Walker. So, I mean, we had, yeah. But they getting Brandon Knight. Brandon Knight is not a, a you know, a slouch. I'm gonna see if there's anybody, cause I like Brandon Knight and what he's been able to do for our team. Um, that 14 million, man. Let me see something. So with, with Brandon Knight off of our thing, our salary cap, as you can see, it's 538,000. Luxury tax room, 20 million. Hard cap is 87. Now you put him on there. And it goes, that salary cap room goes up to 15 million. Hard cap room goes up to 102. And that luxury tax, go, luxury tax goes up to 35. So that's why I'm willing to give him up. You know, he's been playing good for us off the bench. You can see some of his numbers right here. You know, nine um, and three off the bench in limited minutes because him and Tyler Eulis are both backup point guards. Kim Walker's been eating up a lot of minutes. So you got to keep that in mind. He's doing that with limited minutes. Um, 16 minutes. He's giving us nine points and three assists in 16 minutes. So we're going to accept it. Why aren't y'all interested? I hate when 2K does it. This is another thing 2K has to do. When I offer it, they aren't interested. But when they offer it, they just offered. I just asked them to do the same exact trade, and they said they're not interested. I said, what you got? They have a counter offer, and the counter offer was the same exact trade. But because they offered it, it's better because they offer it. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But yeah. Um, the, the things that we're gonna take away from this, we're getting a young young Jonathan Isaac, who defensively is looking like he's gonna be a defensive player of the year candidate in a couple years. We're getting two first round picks for the price of one. That's all the way in 2022, which if we're not a good team by 2020 or 2021, then I, this should I should be fired as a GM. So this 2022 pick shouldn't matter as much because we should be a good team. Or if we're not, I shouldn't be here anymore. And then uh, we give us two second round picks. That's nothing to me when you're getting two first round picks back. Uh, we give him Kemba Walker, who don't want no more. We're getting something for him. James Ennis isn't happy. He's only on a one year deal. He's not. He wasn't a bright spot in our future. And then the same thing with Brandon Knight. He has a big contract that's allowing our salary cap, hard cap, and luxury tax room to grow. And we benefit from losing him. And like I said, he's 27, making 30 million dollars, 15 million a year. We could be giving that 15 million a year to a player with, with an 80 overall or something like that um, that can actually contribute more than just nine points and three assists, which is good, but not $15 million a year good. So that's cool. And then DJ Augustine, he's on a two-year deal. He's making $7 million a year. We'll probably get rid of him during like the draft or the next time we have a, the chance to trade him. Uh, we might try to flip him now, but I, I don't know if 2K will, will let me because sometimes they do the can't trade him until 30 something days have passed but guys get traded in the same day all, all the time so we're gonna accept this and then Terrence Ross is gonna come in um, in all of these numbers the cap room hard cap luxury tax you can add 10 more dollars to that because we're not bringing him back so his 10 million is gonna make all that boost too so we good bada boom bada bam y'all y'all just witnessed big trade um, on the trade deadline now I'm about to go into settings of the, the magic and make sure that their whole lineup and everything is as best as it can be for them to compete and uh you know make a make a big push to the playoffs so game plan star lineup kimball walker mike hurd evan fournier aaron gordon Vuce. then they have jonathan simmons tyrone wallace brandon knight now um, Bismack Biombo, Roddy McGruder, James Ennis still not getting no minutes even with them. Um, I think this is good. I think this is a, this is good. And then look, all of them are on fire. All of them are, are heating up. And so now you get a guy who can come and distribute 
Um, and he can also score to take some pressure off of these young guys because Aaron Gordon ain't never been in the playoffs or been in no playoff race. Uh, Fournier hasn't uh, really as a, as a key member. He hasn't. You know, in Denver, I think they made the playoffs maybe once, but like actually, as an actual guy with an actual role on a, on a playoff pushing team, he hasn't had that role. And Vucevic hasn't either, you know, so. Scoring options, I'm gonna make Kimmel Walker the first scoring option. Um, no, I'm gonna let it be, I'm gonna continue to allow it to be Gordon. Um, and I'm gonna make, him will be the second one because so, I, I don't want them to trade him and he just come in and step over people's foot. So we're gonna let that and then Michael. Mike ain't one of the top three scoring options, you know, as a rookie. That's just unfortunate when you're playing with these type of players. But they should be better. They should be a better team. You know what I mean? That's what I'm hoping for. So we're gonna look at right now the standings again to refresh it. They are the sixth seed and they're 26 and 28. When we simulate, we're going to look and see how they've been doing since the since post Kemba. And um, we're going to be checking in on them. And then also, while it's still on my mind, let's try to see if we can get, um, if they're going to let me get Augustine off the, the team real quick. Yeah, see, can't trade him again for 60 days. So we're going to wait for the NBA draft to trade him. Um, Kemba Walker being gone makes us look a lot worse on paper. Um, but it makes us look better for the future. You know, um, we're about to finish the rest of the season, basically not tanking, but we, we're just not a good team. So we're going to lose. The chemistry took a big hit, um, but we got better in the youth category with Jonathan Isaac. And I said, I love his, his defensive potential and his ability to knock down a three. Um, because I think he's going to be a stretch forward for us. And then you know, it'll probably move TJ Warren to the bench. You know, we're going to look to draft a point guard like my little brother or somebody somebody that can really um, help us in, in the guard area because I don't think there's a lot of big men in this next upcoming draft. Um, or not, not anybody that's worthy of a top pick. There's no big man worthy of a top pick in this draft. You know, it looks like we're headed to a top pick. So we're going to try to get a point guard. Um, Booker the shooting guard. My dude will be the small four. Isaac will be the four. Lane would be the five. Um, and then TJ Warren will come off the bench with you know Daniels and Ulis. And then Tyson Chandler, his 13 million, will, we let him leave and go to a contender, and his 13 million will be off the books. Um, so when you look at Chandler, 13.5 million off the books next year. Dudley. 9.5 so you take the 0.5 from his and the 0.5 from Chandler's that's 1 million and then you take his 9 and Chandler's 13 that's 22 that's 23 million just with those two combined and you add another 10 million and that's 33 million you know 33.5 million dollars off of our books just with those three guys so that's gonna put us in a very good healthy position for free agency um, to add to our team and you know we're gonna be able to add some pieces from that way too so then when you look at the ability to add something to free agency um the youth and then we're gonna have a high draft pick plus we have the magic draft draft pick we're gonna be in a position to really get better and um i'm excited you know i'm disappointed but but i'm i'm, I'm liking the situation and the position that we're, we're shaping ourselves to be we took we took what we had you know what i mean unfortunately we we not that that team that we thought we were gonna be, it didn't work. We took a chance, you know. I'm pretty sure nobody expected us to not be be uh, better. Nobody expected us to be this bad, but it is what it is, you know. Um, we traded Josh Jackson. He's over there doing his thing, but we literally had no room for him. He wouldn't be doing what he's doing with the Hornets on our team because he would have to play behind my guy, TJ Warren. Like, it was just really no room for him. So he's taking advantage of all of his opportunity. He's an 82, it's fantastic. Uh, but then if you look down and you look at the other guy we gave Chris, he's been devoted to the D League. He's, you know, his rating is dropping three. You know, Devon Reed, you know, it's just pretty much staying the same player he was when he was here. You know, um, and the, thank God the draft pick we gave up was not this year's draft pick because then they would be having projected, you know, a, a top two pick. Um, so I'm just happy I didn't give them that pick. 
Um, but we took a chance. If you don't take a chance, you know, what's gonna happen? Um, so we're just gonna simulate the rest of this season. Um, adjust the rotation manually. It's 48 minutes from Kim Walker. Jonathan Isaac, yeah, give Jonathan Isaac 28 minutes. Terrence Ross can get 15. Then we give five minutes to uh, <clears throat> to my boy, Augustine. Bender is gonna come off the bench. Wanna see what Jonathan Isaac can do uh, while starting <clears throat> as a starter. Ulysses, Ulysses is gonna be a starter. Uh, fix him annually. What is, what is wrong? TJ Warren is hurt that bad that we can't, or is it because he's reserved? Yeah. Yeah, TJ Warren is off the bench now, y'all. So, put him in that six man slot. Bender after him. Jonte Porter. <clears throat> I like Dudley. Uh, I thought, you know, this team was going to be good, so I kept Dudley um, because. On a playoff team, his ability to stretch the floor, catch and shoot threes, uh, pick and pop would have been crucial, but it's nothing. And Wendell Carter, hey, I don't know if I ever showed you his injury, but it's real bad. Um, so we're just hoping he recovers in good time because he has a cracked neck vertebrae. So um, whenever your rookie has a cracked neck vertebrae, it's terrible. I'm gonna put my dude as a second scoring option just because he's starting over Warren. I like the reason I'm picking Warren to come off the bench instead of my guy is because Warren is a scorer. So he can come in and be with the second unit. He can be the go-to guy for them. My dude is is not a, is not looking to score first. TJ Warren is, so with the second unit, um, which would, in the future we'll have him and Ulysses, um, he'll be able to be the go-to guy and have all the opportunity he want. And then he can close out games with us. He's, gonna st he's still gonna log minutes and play minutes with the first first unit. Um, so it's, it's not a big deal. <sighs> I'm just hoping he uses it, uses it in a positive way and, and look, looks at himself as potentially, you know, becoming a um, six man of the year type, type guy and not looking at it as, as a negative, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Devin Booker just got hurt, of course, so we're going to put Troy Daniels in, and we're going to have to distribute 37 minutes of uh, Devin Booker. So we'll give 14 of those minutes to Dudley. This is the thing that makes 2K such a long processing game to simulate, because you have to do all of these things so that they don't distribute or change your lineup any way you have to do it yourself. So we gave how many minutes? To Dudley, we gave him 14. Um, we gave him 12, and then it's 11 more. We'll give the rest to Augustine, so I remember how it was distributed. So when he comes back, I can just take those minutes from number three. <clears throat> it's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's real crazy. I just cannot get over the fact that we this bad. We put up 149 points on the Pelicans for a win. That's very surprising and whatnot. I'll be sure to go check how the All-Star Weekend panned out. Um, Warren is back from his injury. Would you like to stop? Uh, yes. Let's just see if they're gonna allow me to. Okay, he's undecided. The rest of them, the rest of them I could talk to in off season, but I knew Devin Booker was up for an extension. He, want, he wants to wait till free agency. End of the year, we can do that. Um, Devin Booker is back now. Uh, so now I gotta retake all those minutes. I gave him 12, so he can go back to 14. I gave Dudley 14 minutes, and then I gave him 11. So now Devin Booker comes back in for Dudley. Give him his 37 minutes back. You back to the bench. And all my guys are tired, but it don't matter. Let them be, it's the end of the year. This is exactly what I mean by 2K, man. Another injury. And it's always like two to, okay, at least he's out for a month. 
I hate those knickknack injuries. Give me all his minutes, and we gonna give all his 15 minutes to DJ Augustine. One guy. <clears throat> now I would just love to be able to simulate this and just get it over with. Isaac, it's okay, he's better. We just won two in a row. <laughs> Lost to the Magic. Um. So yeah, you know our plans is basically right now is to just try to get the best draft pick we can get. Um. The rotation is try to get the best draft. Draft pick we can get, the highest pick we can get, obviously. Um, I think my little brother is the best guard in the draft. Maybe the best player, but we want the best guard. We want to we want a lead guard um, to pair with Devin Booker. And then, even if it's a score first guard, we'll uh, just allow my dude to have the uh, responsibility of handling the ball and distributing the ball for the team. Tyler Ulysses is back, so we'll just give him all of his minutes and he'll get the start and roll right back. <sighs> and then free agency, the market for, for what we need and like the power forward, um, he's still day to day. I'm gonna let him, that neck vertebrae, he need to fully recover. The power forward market for, um, and free agency is, is, is not, is limited, so. That's gonna be interesting to see how that folds or unfolds. <clears throat> Where's Wendell Carter? Get Wendell some minutes, man. And there we are. We're gonna end the season. Hyper extended right knee for my dude, of course. Use this back. Simulate this last game against Mason. We won. So, tw wow. Okay. So, they made me exit out the fucking thing accidentally. First team on NBA Russ, Harden, James, Greek Freak, Towns, Wall, Curry, Leonard, George for the second team with Drummond. Third team, Lillard, Chris Paul, Ben Simmons, Aaron Gordon, Whiteside. Aaron Gordon made an all NBA team. That's exciting to see. First team defense. Wall, Westbrook, Greek Freak, Leonard, Whiteside. Um, then you got Beverly, Chris Paul, Draymond Green, LeBron, DeAndre Jordan. First rookie all team, my dude, Bagley. Beats him. My boy beats him. Thank you, Kenny. I'm, I'm glad he made it. Michael Porter Jr. Then hopefully this next page we can see Derek, Mike, or Mason. Derek made it. Um, Aiden, Trey, Trey Young. Okay, Trey Brown. That's very, very, very solid. And then Mobamba. Um, as far as the regular season awards, we can go back and look at them, I believe. Um, we have to look at league news social media. So LeBron was the MVP. Um, Maybe if I go to my calendar. Batum was the sixth man of the year. My dude is the rookie of the year. LeBron is the MVP. Um, they don't say who's been the defensive player of the year or anything like that. So we'll see when we simulate if they update that. And wow, 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 wow. Wow, Mike and the Orlando Magic did not make the playoffs. They did not. None of us made the playoffs. The Jazz didn't make the playoffs. Wow, let's see, so let's see. They were 26 and 28 um, when they got the trade. And then they only won seven games after that trade. They were seven and 21 after the Kemba Walker trade. So, word around town is that Kim Walker is not. Wow. His numbers went down a bit. Scoring wise. Wow. So, word around town is Kim Walker ain't the answer. Wow. And let's see what he has to say about being with them. He wants to test his value. Wow. 
Kimball Walker does not sign extension with Magic before deadline will test free agency. Wow. That is crazy. Breaking news. Suns trade Kimball Walker from, to Magic. After trading away Kimball Walker, the Suns might need to go find a new starting point guard. Cool. Um, and uh, that same day he got traded, he played and had 18 points and they won. And then two days later, he said he's going to test free agency, which probably wasn't surprising. So that's why we traded him. Uh, but everybody are saying, is that a mistake? And it looks like it will be because I don't think Kevin Walker going to get no crazy contract. Um, he's out. He had an injury, but I don't think that played too much of a part. Did anybody else have some type of injury? I don't look like it. Wow. I just knew that they was going to be a playoff team. They went 7 and 21. After the Kimmel trade, that is ridiculous. Because only five teams are above 500. So you got three other teams making the playoffs in the East under 500. The Wizards are six games under 500. The Pacers are six games under 500. Derrick and the Bulls missed it by a game. They missed it by a game. Wow. That's crazy. Then in the West, the Jazz. Oh, the Jazz, okay, well, they missed it by a lot, but they are 10th in the in the West. And we, we finished with the worst record in basketball. So, I don't like that because usually that doesn't, that 2K does not reward you with the number one pick, even though you have the worst record because of the draft odds. It never goes to the team with the worst record. We're probably going to get like a fourth overall pick, but we're going to have to see what happens. So now, after a year... Um, together, the Thunder come back. They add some veteran presence and Wade. Melo goes to the bench, it looks like. And, um, <clears throat> no, this does this actually doesn't even show their side lineup. This is by points. So, never mind. Forget what I'm saying. But they added Wade. Um, Melo returned with Paul George. They went out and got, what, Mark, uh, Monte Morris. Oh, the point guard I thought was one of the Morris brothers, but they got Monte Morris, the backup point guard. Cool. At 15 in the playoff games. The Kings are our playoff team. Wow, Kings are our playoff team. Justin Jackson. So Isaiah Thomas and Will Barton came through and helped them become a playoff team. Um, De'Aaron Fox had eight points. Whatever. They blew them out. So the Thunder are the number one seed. So all of these teams, except the Kings and the Clippers, really made the playoffs. So they. Beat them in five games. Seven game series between the Thunder, I mean the Spurs and the Pelicans. Um, the Rockets beat the, the, the Timberwolves 4-2. They just played each other in real life. And then you got the Warriors sweeping the Clippers. So we might have a, a Western Conference Finals um, of Thunder. Uh, no, we won't. So we will have a new champion this year. The uh, th uh, Warriors lose to the the Rockets, and it looks like I'm pretty sure they all have the pretty much same team. Okay, they got Amino. Um, I remember them them trading um, Brian Anderson to the Blazers, so they got Turner and Amino. Pretty much the same team, though. Same thing with them. Antonio Blatney was added. It was this Jamal Crawford, Jordan Crawford? Okay, and Joe Johnson went to the the Warriors. So Joe Johnson trying to get that ring. They ain't letting that. And then the the Thunder have only lost two games. In the playoffs so far and then out here in the east um lebron second seed and he's upset by the pacers that is crazy um sixers handling business bucks handling business the pacers i mean the, the celtics upset by the pistons um luka Doncic came in and, and helped that front court of blake griffin and deandre jordan in the playoffs so now they do anything but then they get eliminated by um, the Pacers. So the Pacers are like a Cinderella team. They upset at the second seed. They upset at the sixth seed. Now they're in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the Bucks upset at the pick, uh, six is 4-1. Did anybody get hurt? This is game what? This is the Bucks score game five. The last game. And everybody's played. Everybody was healthy. Wow. I'm sorry. I got to look through these games. This is game one. Ben Simmons... Only played 19 minutes. And um, was he in foul trouble? Yeah, he fouled out. In 19 minutes, Ben Simmons fouled out. Gerald B fouled out in 27 minutes. So I'm guessing, yeah, so the Bucks ran away with that game. 
Greek Freak put up his numbers. Bledsoe had 16 assists. Jabari had 13 and 10 and 6. Motley had 10 rebounds. Henson 11 and 9. Oh, yeah, they, they, they went crazy. They got them fouled out and took them out of the game. Game 2, same results. The Bucks ran off with that game. And B came back with 30 and 11. Uh, Simmons only had 10 and 6. They just didn't get a lot of help. And B didn't really get any help. Whereas Fultz, Fultz played 27 minutes and only had three points. Only took five shots. Uh, TJ McConnell, one for five. Covington, two for 10. Sarek, five for 19. Yeah. Defensively, the Bucks are the Bucks are crazy. Bledsoe with another double-double. Greek Freak, 20, 10, and five. Jabari, 25, and eight. 17 from Bridges. This is Mikhail Bridges. Still in the draft. He fell in the draft. If I don't know if y'all remember, but he fell late in the draft in the 20s. And he... He big for them. Molly seven and eight again. Henson six and six. Maker six and six. They rebounding the hell out of the ball. It's 56 rebounds to the six is 39. Yeah. Game three. But all the Bucks went out to a 3-0 lead. Wow. Greek Freak almost got a triple double. With and then, then on top of that, five steals and then one turnover. Then Middleton came out and gave him 24. He helped him with the scoring. Jabari, 18, 11, and five. So the contract they gave Jabari was worth it because he's going crazy. 84, 11. Bledsoe, 17, and eight. He's damn near averaging a double-double over 10 assists in this series. Mikhail Bridges, 13, and nine. Um, Henson, five, and five. They rebounded the hell out of the ball. 47 rebounds to 37. They out-rebounded the hell out of them. Ben Simmons came to play, <clears throat> and Embiid only had nine points on eight shots. He was fouled out again, fouled out for the second time in the series. Noel was fined, fouled out in 19 minutes. That's their backup center. So they really took them out of the game. And Sarek struggled again from the field, five for 13. Covington struggled again from the field, two for 13 in 31 minutes. Folks, 29 minutes and two points again. They locking them up. And then the one game that Philly won, J.J. Reddick came out, shot the ball good. Covington shot the ball better. And B fouled out again. Um, wow, so they just had a – Ben Simmons only had five points in 32 minutes. He only took six shots. But they just got a game where J.J. Reddick and Covington Bush combined had 11 threes. So they, they were able to steal the game. They only won this game by four. And then the Bucks, Jabari had 31 and seven, Middleton 29 and eight, 16 and 11. Greek Freak only played 12 minutes. He must have got hurt. So Greek Freak got hurt. Greek Freak, missed, Greek Freak got hurt, missed the rest of the game. So he's day to day. And that's why they won that game. Cause Greek Freak only played 12 minutes. So they got lucky by that. And then game five, Greek Freak doesn't play, and they still win. And um, Fultz, 27 minutes, eight points. Um, he fouls out in 27 minutes. Does MB foul out? No. Sarek fouls out, though, and his best shoot, his best game in the series, he fouled out. And uh, back to struggling. MB, four for 12. JJ Reddick, five for 13. Two for six from three. One for five from three. Covington, three for 10. Four for 11, two for seven. Yeah, so they really just locked them up this whole series and really, wow. The Bucks, the Bucks got some. The Bucks out here playing good D. So the Bucks about to go to the finals. Yes, the Bucks, the Bucks swept, the Bucks swept the Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'm guaranteed, let's, let's, let's just see, because I'm very interested to keep up with these Bucks now. Let's go to game one. They beat the, oh, they, oh, they beat them by one point. Oh, because Greek Freak was day-to-day -day and was missing. So Greek Freak didn't play. They winning without Greek Freak. <clears throat> and look at these field goals. Six for 15. Two for seven. Okay, but three for eight. So, but they shooting the ball a little bit more better. They shooting the ball a little bit more better than the Sixers. Aladipo had seven for 11, 22 points. CJ Williams, um, 20 points. Bosch had 14. Um, nobody fouled out. Miles Turner, three for five. Yeah, they played them good, but that's six for 15. 
Aladipo only shot 11 shots. I don't know what that was about. Um, rebounding, they had 35 rebounds. And they had 38. Okay, but, but Parker, I questioned that long-term contract they gave him, but he's showing that he deserves it. 41 points, seven rebounds, 16 for 23, two for four from three. Bledsoe, another double-double with five more assists and one turnover. Middleton, another 20-point game. He struggled from the field, seven for 17, but he still was able to give him a 20. Thigh maker stepped up and gave him 16 points. Uh, Motley gave him another 10 rebound game. Oh, wow. Mikael Bridges, eight points, struggled from the field a little bit. But this right here, this 41-point game from Jabari, was the game two, Greek Freak returns. Right back to actions, 25, 10, six, four steals. Five turnovers, 11 for 24. But Middleton and and Don Maker stepped up for 30 point game. Wow, the Bucks, the Bucks are about to win a championship if they can. This will be the most talked about thing ever if this was real life. Wow, Jabari Parker six for 18, struggled, but still had a way around the game with 14, six and five. Damn. Motley, 11 and 6. Bridges, 8. One, 8 points, 1 rebound, 3 assists, 3 steals, and a block. 3 for 4 from the field. Shit. They stacked. 10 for 15, 9 for 15, 11 for 20. Okay, that's, they, that's better. But it just won enough. So, I mean, it just won enough. They shot the ball better. Nolan Powell got fouled out. They, they shot the ball better, but boy, boy, boy. They shot the ball even better. When Thon Maker's giving you 30 points and nine rebounds, seven for nine from the field, 11 feet free throw attempts, you got no chance. And they only lost by eight, but the Bucks got it done. They didn't knock off. Yeah, I knew they lost this game just because they didn't score with Bosch with 19 points. Aladipo, seven for eight. Why he not shooting more? I don't know. Only 16 points. Uh, CJ Williams, 13. Okay, they shooting the ball with 14, four for 14. Four for nine, one for seven from a starter. 33 minutes, one for seven. And then uh, Thaddeus Young, one for seven. So it, the, the pace is, the, the, the Bucks lock somebody up, uh, a starter up every game. At least one starter is gonna struggle. Greek Free come out, 25, five, five, three steals, two blocks, 10 for 18. Jabari Parker, 24 and 10 and seven. Almost a triple double. Another 20 point game, another double double. He going crazy. Blesso had seven and seven, only shot four shots. Bridges had nine points. Um, Maker got some confidence. He's scoring double digits. And Henson scoring double digits. Um, Middleton struggled, but I mean, when Jabari is giving you 24, 10, and seven, you know you're getting that 25 from Greek Freak. You're solid. And it looked like they didn't play much, uh, much late in the game because of the blowout. They only played 32 minutes, it's 48. 48 minutes available. They, they didn't really play that much because I guess they ran off the game. And then they, the last game, they Greek Freak said, "Hey, we're not stretching the series out no more." Came out with 34. Molly gave him 22. They they got guys stepping up. Bledsoe with another double digit assist game. He struggled from the field, two for nine. Uh, Henson is giving him eight point eight rebounds, two for seven. He struggled. Uh, Maker struggled, but but even when these two guys struggled, Motley stepped up. Uh, Jabari 17 and 6, 8 for 12, so efficient. He's, he's balling. And they swept them. And then on the flip side, this game, this went to seven games. And uh, let's just see what happened in game seven. Uh, Westbrook 22, 10 for 19, over 4 for 3. Paul George disappe disappeared. 1 for 7, 8 for 20, 21. Melo, 11 of his 21 points come from the free throw line. 4 for 12 from the field. Willie Reed, two for six. He shot 11 free throws, though. So he got to the free throw line. Yeah. So. Struggle. Everybody struggled besides Westbrook. Again. Just like real life. It's crazy. Chris Paul, 10, 19 and 10. 12 and 11 from Clint Capella. Harden did his thing, of course, so he had his proper help. Trey Burke gave him 15 points. Um, dude from Kentucky, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I, his last name is Alexander. I don't know why they just put Gilius 
Gillis, whatever it is. But yeah, that's just that's what happened in game seven. Wow. So the finals is the Bucks against the Rockets. The Bucks take game one. 34 from Greek Freak, 12 for 17. Let's see if they locked up anybody. Um, PJ Tucker, one for six, but PJ Tucker ain't that big of, big of a role for them to score. 13, 11. They just outplayed him, I guess. Yeah, they just played better. Played better. Out-rebounded them. 44 rebounds to 26. That, there's, that's the summary of that. Uh, let's just simulate the round. Uh-oh, up 3-1. Bucks are the champion. Greek Freak is your finals MVP. Uh, 27, 8, and 5 that he averaged. That is amazing. Uh, they beat them 4 to 2. This is crazy. And then a closeout game, Jabari Parker had 21 and 7. Blesso had 20. Uh, did they lock anybody up? Yeah, Harden 7 for 15, 2 for 7 from 3. Chris Paul 7 for 15. Reeves a 4 for 10. Burke 4 for 9. 3 for 9 for Capella. Only six points in 31 minutes. So the Bucks defensively won the championship throughout the playoffs. Every game that I showed y'all statistically in the box score, they uh, outplayed them. Defensively, they outplayed all the teams. And that's what wins your championships, defense. So congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. Greek Freak, they're champions. That brought the crowd to their feet.